Welcome home chefs, seafood lovers, and food enthusiasts from all walks of life. I'm Chef Andrew from North Coast Seafoods. This is my test kitchen, and welcome to the Seafood Supper Club. Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of the Seafood Supper Club. I'm Andrew Wilkinson, Chef Director of Research and Development here at North Coast Seafoods. On tonight's menu, swordfish piccata with Greek spanakle riso. And if we have time, I'm gonna have some fun with our leftovers and put together our swordfish blat. That's bacon, lettuce, avocado, and tomato. Swordfish is such a treat. It usually bears a hefty price tag in restaurants, but always a great market price at Big Y. And especially when swordfish is on sale, I feel like celebrating. So, swordfish will cook up in a flash. The loin is cut into steaks, making it ideal for grilling and skewering, as well as other cooking methods that don't fare well with more delicate fish varieties like cod or haddock. Around here, swordfish is known as the prime rib of the sea because of its meaty, sweet flesh, and firm texture. This can certainly stand up to some serious, bold flavors. So raw swordfish meat will vary in color from ivory white to pink orange color. This darker area of your swordfish is nothing bad or unhealthy. It's simply the bloodline of the fish, rich in something called myoglobin, the same iron-containing pigment that makes red meat red. So. What should you be asking for at the fish counter? For this recipe, you're gonna ask for half inch, half inch thick swordfish steaks. The fish cutter at Big Y will have a swordfish loin just like this one and will custom cut your order like this. So now once you're home, I would probably recommend removing the skin and the bloodline before cooking. If you are a grilled swordfish steak lover and prefer a thicker cut, no problem. Grill away and just use this piccata, piccata sauce to accompany your grilled swordfish. So, here we go. Today's recipe, swordfish piccata. You've seen chicken and veal piccata on restaurant menus before, but the classic piccata ingredients of lemon, garlic, parsley, and capers complement the flavor profile of swordfish perfectly. The thin cut cooks in just a few minutes and then is simply paired with some classic Mediterranean flavors of the sun. For our accompaniment tonight, we'll be making spanakel riso, which is a simple Greek dish with white rice, spinach, and feta cheese. So just like our last episode, 
our seafood is going to cook quickly. So it should be the last thing that you prepare. So first we'll prep all of our other ingredients. Chop the garlic, dice the shallots, zest the lemon, and chop the capers. Then we'll get our spanical riesel rice ready, and finally we'll cook our swordfish. So you ready to take a stab at this? See what I did there? Swordfish, stab, ah, dad joke, forget about it. So tonight's lineup for a classic piccata, lemon, capers, garlic, shallots, olive oil, wonder of flour, a little grated Parmesan cheese and some white wine, and of course, four each beautiful half inch thin cut swordfish steaks. So the first prep item today will be chopped garlic. Just gonna separate it into a few cloves here. Then I give it a little bit of a press just so that skin will release from the clove itself. And then we've gotta peel off all that papery skin off of the garlic. Clean up our board, we move on. Two ways to chop garlic I'm gonna show you. First, you can take a little aggravation out. Put the side of the knife on and whack. Give it a slam and then we're gonna run over it with our knife, give it a little chop then turn our knife on its side and sort of just press it down, make it into a small sort of a garlic paste. That's it. Second way is with a microplane. Love this. This is a great tool everyone should have in their kitchen. Take the garlic clove right over the microplane. Grady, great, great. And what you have here after that, you just give it a little bang and there you have fresh chopped garlic. There's two beautiful ways to chop garlic. Next up to bat, the designated secret weapon of chefs everywhere, the shallot. Truly the golden child of the onion family. Chefs love it because it adds a flavor foundation and a richness to your recipes. It complements garlic and ginger as well. And believe it or not, there are some people out there who don't enjoy garlic, so feel free to substitute shallots for garlic in any recipe. It definitely adds a delicate sweet flavor with a hint of sharpness. Just dice it like you would a regular onion, a couple of cross hatches both way, then give it a cross cut the other way, and presto, dice shallots are easy peasy. All you gotta do is give it a little once over, and there you go, chopped shallots are done. Okay, here comes the kicker ingredient, your boost of flavor, the caper. They may be small, but watch out, they pack a punch. Definitely a staple of the Mediterranean diet, they're quite tangy, lemony, even olivey. Capers add a culinary intensity to a piccata recipe. Keep these in your fridge for sure. Lemon zest. It's like sunshine on a cloudy day. That's right, just wash and dry your lemon. Use the microplane to remove the outer layer full of natural citrus oils. So I use Italian flat leaf parsley for my recipes. It adds a bright, faintly bitter background to this dish. Some say that love or music is life's ultimate unifier. Bah, it's parsley. Chopped fresh parsley is the great unifier. It brings the most important things in life together like garlic, shallots, capers, and lemon butter. When it comes to great side dishes and the perfect accompaniment to any piccata recipe, the Greeks, the Greeks have got us covered today with spanakle riso. Simply put, spanakle riso is Greek comfort food. Earthy rice, healthy spinach, and rich feta cheese. There are hundreds of variations of spanakle riso, but today we're gonna keep it very simple. Hot butter, today I have leftover jasmine rice pilaf, and some frozen spinach. I always have frozen spinach in my freezer. It's a fantastic commodity item. Simply thaw, squeeze out the excess water, chop and add. To finish off this dish, what I'm gonna add is a rich cube feta cheese. This is what brings it all together. Sort of melts in, gets ooey gooey, perfect accompaniment, great side dish. So now it's finally time to cook our swordfish. This recipe is the best kind of recipe. It's the kind of recipe that calls for wine. And I get asked all the time, what's the best wine to cook seafood with? And my answer is always the same. It's the same wine you like to drink. And if you have not been to Table and Vine, you should really check it out. It's a division of Big Y, and my local Big Y in Franklin, Massachusetts, has a Table and Vine right in the store itself. They have over 4,000 varieties of wine, 
3,500 spirits and 3,500 domestic imported and micro and craft root beer. It's like a bloody museum, Disney on ice. Well, today we are using Graham Norton's own Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Fantastic wine to drink and to cook with. So now that we have our wine, we're ready to go. Okay, it's crunch time. So I'm gonna give you a play-by-play -play instructions while you watch. So I've got a hot saute pan, butter, and olive oil. Simply season the swordfish with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. I use Wonder Flour because it is a nice, simple, very light coating to my fish or any protein that I'm gonna do a pan saute with. So, swordfish steaks get coated with the Wonder, go into the hot butter and oil, allow it to cook, don't move it around too much. You can see the butter starting to brown and the oil is bubbling, so we've got a nice temperature. Let's maintain that temperature while we're moving along. Now it's gonna be time to flip over that swordfish after a couple of minutes. Let's take a look. No problem. Flip it over. Now we're gonna allow the second side of the swordfish to cook. How do we test it? Here's my little trick for you today. Take the flat end of a wooden skewer, stick it into the fish. If you get resistance, it's not done. If it goes straight to the bottom, that means the fish is cooked through. Let's take the swordfish out of the pan and wipe that pan out. Get any black bits or brown bits out of that pan. Add a little bit more oil. Reduce the temperature a little bit because it's time to add the shallots and the garlic and we don't want them to burn because if they start to brown, it can actually turn your sauce a little bit on the bitter side. So cook your shallots and garlic without color. Add your wine. And then let's add our low sodium chicken broth. And now we're going to simmer this sauce, actually boil it. We're going to take out the water out of it and intensify the flavors. That's what we do when we reduce a sauce. Let's add the soft butter. I'm gonna swirl that in. It's continuing to simmer. Add our capers. Add that lemon zest. We've got the sunshine. Add the lemon juice. Keep it simmering. All those flavors are starting to come together now. The Parmesan cheese will add a little foundation. And then we've got our great unifier, the chopped parsley. Look at that. Add those cooked swordfish steaks back to the sauce, bringing it back up to a simmer. Let's turn them over so we distribute that flavor perfectly. Oh, that looks fantastic. Wow. Okay, let's plate this with a little chef personality. A couple of tall spoonfuls of your spanakorizo. Let's put our swordfish down, add some height to the plate. A couple of spoonfuls of our piccata sauce. Clean up the side of that plate, make it look pretty. Great job. Great job. So there you have it. Swordfish piccata with the Greek spanakorizo rice. I love the fact that you can make this restaurant style dish at home in less than 30 minutes. Please tell us what you think of this dish, leave it in your comments, and we'll get back to you next week. We hope you like it. Join us again in a couple of weeks for another recipe in the Seafood Supper Club. Thanks.